everyone, so today we are doing a very exciting video. In this video, we are doing a sequel of sorts. Speaking of sequel though, this weekend I watched the entire Hunger Games franchise, like all the movies. Nine hours of Hunger Games is what I watched this weekend. <laughs> and I had literally like the worst sleep last night because I just kept picturing PETA when they rescue him. Whew. It was emotional. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why I did that because actually the reason I watched The Hunger Games was because I didn't feel like going to the Batman movie because it was three hours long and I just felt like that was too long. So then I proceeded to watch nine hours of The Hunger Games. Anyways, this sequel is not gonna be as good as any of The Hunger Games sequels, but this is the sequel to the small appliances return box that I bought. If you haven't seen that, I suggest watching that first, but today we are going to be diving in to a few of the small appliances and we're going to be cooking. We're gonna be cooking some yummy meals in these and see how everything fares. In the original video, I did lightly test some of the pieces and it seemed to be successful, but I have a feeling that diving into them more could bring on different problems. Like for instance, at first I thought the kettle was working, but then when I filled it up to the top, it started leaking. Thing because this one's oh. <laughs> hot water, check. That one's perfect. This one's good. Alert, alert, just filled this up and look it. Water is dripping out of this. Oh, that's what's happening. So it is broken. Thank goodness we did this. Otherwise we would have literally donated this. So maybe the air fryer worked for something, but then when you use it longer, it lights on fire. Now I'm being very secretive and unbiased because I'm actually, when I'm filming the intro, I've already filmed the video. So I actually know what happens, but I'm keeping it quiet. But yeah, so today we are going to be testing quite a few of these small appliances. I looked up some fun recipes. I'm hoping it's interesting and fun to watch. As I was filming this video, I was like, why am I filming this? And is anybody gonna enjoy this video? So make sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. And without further ado, let us dive in. is really bad today. Okay, the first return product we are going to be cooking in is the hot pot. I am so excited about this. I went to the grocery store yesterday after reading up on hot pot like all day, tons of recipes, what you can put in them, and my mouth is watering. So excited. I got so many things to use and I'm currently gluten and dairy free so it was sort of hard to pick certain things but I think we have a pretty good spread. Now we just have to hope that this will work. It worked in our little mini test but this will be the serious test. Initially when I was thinking about getting this I was thinking fondue like two different types of fondue but then I was reading about hot pot and I thought we should try that. But I think this is gonna be a ton of fun. <laughs> For a hot pot, there are many different ingredients you can use. I picked out just a few that would work with my current diet. Also, I'm not dieting. It's more of a testing of food sensitivities. It's a long story. We won't talk about it. So I picked up this bone broth. I also found this miso soup instant noodle, which I actually didn't check if this had milk in it. No, we good, so I got that. Then at the TNT market, they had these roasted seaweed snacks, which was for one of the broths I'm making. I got this, when in doubt, I will flavor with chicken. A whole bunch of potatoes, roasted sesame seeds. I don't remember if this is for this, but I got avocado oil spray. These are the pieces I had refrigerated. I got all of the fun mushrooms that my grocery store had. So some more normal ones, then I got portobello. And then this one, which looks pretty interesting. This is an oyster mushroom, which I think I've only ever had once. So that's kind of fun. I picked up two steaks, which we're gonna have to cut. I watched some tutorials on that to make them very thin for hot pot. Some green onions. Then I picked up this extra firm tofu, this tofu puffs. They look so good. I'm so excited about that. I've never had these. A rice noodle. These are all the ingredients. Lots here, as you can see. I think a few of the ingredients I already had here too. Like I think we're gonna be incorporating a bit more, but let's get into it. First, I'm gonna pop the steak into the freezer 
for 15 minutes to get it half frozen. I got two broth recipes. Let's do it. We're gonna keep it simple on this broth. We're gonna use the miso mix, green onions, and some of the seaweed papers. Okay, so now I'm just gonna mix this up. Oh my goodness, it smells good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get this to simmer, and that'll be our first broth. And now we need to cut the steak. So how the steak works is when it's, whatever. When it's half frozen, you can slice it really, really thin. So I'm going to try and do that. Oh, they're a little soft still. Okay, never mind, the steak needs 10 more minutes. We're gonna make the second broth. This one is a little bit more me making it, not just a pack. Actually, yeah, a little bit. I knew I needed bone broth for this one, but I didn't realize this was like packets for a single cup for sipping, because I guess it's good for you, but I got it for this, so hopefully it'll still work. That one smells good. It's a little bit of a darker color. I'm gonna add a little bit of red chili flakes, just because this is my hot one, even though it's not hot at all, because the hot, hot pot option looked so spicy, I thought I might die. So I thought, better not. Now I'm gonna also add this ginger stirring paste. Now usually I don't measure anything, but for the sake of this video, I will, because I love you guys. Okay, we're gonna do a fair bit of this. Ginger. Oh, this one smells so flavorful. Mmm. I feel like garlic would be really good in here. I might add some. Nice, okay. Yes, it makes my hands smell like garlic. Yes, I do like it. Checking on the steaks again. How are you guys? Oh gosh, get out, get out. Different knife for safety. Okay, that's too thin. That's not gonna work. The tutorial I was watching, it was like a lot colder than this. You know, like it was like almost like a rock. Okay, that's a little better. It's a little bit better. Sorry if this grosses anyone out. You can skip to this time if you don't want to see me cutting this meat. Not bad for my first attempt. I actually did hot pot now that I'm thinking about it. When I was in Japan, it was so cool. It was on like the seventh story of this super, super tall building. And we went in not really knowing what it was. And then when we sat down, they took this fabric and covered up our purses. And I now know why, because when you do hot pot and it's like smoking, everything smells like hot pot. I was wearing this one sweater and it literally, I watched it like twice and it still smelled like hot pot. It was really, really good though. We had all these little, like little thin pieces of meat, flip it. There were different vegetables, different things. So yeah, very cool. Now please, hot pot, don't have a hole or start leaking or something crazy. These have been simmering. Pray for me, you guys. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And like so, <gasps> almost the perfect amount. It smells so much like ginger. Okay, I accidentally poured a little bit of that one in this one, but it'll be okay. Yummy, okay. Okay, I'm gonna cut up the portobello mushrooms for in this one. I don't know, I saw that online, so I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I've actually ever had a portobello mushroom. <gasps> Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. That looks so amazing, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna throw a few of these in here. Oh my gosh, they look so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. No, no, I'm obsessed. Okay, I'm gonna plug this in and get it simmering over on the table. I'm gonna not trip. I'm gonna not trip with this right now. But yeah, I have quite a bit of stuff to get out and plate, and then we'll be eating. Oh yeah, I forgot I got baby bok choy.
Hello, rice noodles. This is the last thing we gotta cook up. Then we get to eat. Okay, you guys, this is the moment of truth to see if this hot pot returned will work. Okay, let's turn it up to just the lowest setting and we'll see how it does. Oh my gosh, I think it's working. You can see right there, it's heating up. It's throwing heat. Nothing is spilling. Oh my gosh, yes. The hot pot is complete. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I wish you guys could smell this room right now. We got tofu, we got noodles that I kind of ruined, but they're still really, really tasty. Oh my gosh, sorry for that noise. Peas, puff tofu, baby bok choy, two different broths, bunch of different mushrooms, some sesame seeds, potato, steak, salt and pepper. I think this is gonna be worlds better than the terrible excuse for a hot pot I did in the testing video when I put creamed corn in here. <gasps> it's so hot. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Mom, move the creamed corn around a little bit. Hopefully this makes up for that. It's probably not a perfect traditional hot pot, but it's my take on it. I'm gonna invite everybody in to have it. I made this for my parents and Stuart and I, and we're gonna get to chowing down. Chip, what do you think? Oh my gosh, he says this looks wonderful. He said this looks amazing. You know what I'm just noticing? This side is cooking hotter than this side. <gasps> is this actually defective? Oh no, wait. We're good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This looks amazing. <laughs> this looks great. Oh, what do you smell? Doesn't it smell amazing? That looks awesome. What the heck is this? Look at these cute little bok choy. Baby bok choy. <gasps> they do kind of taste like. Um... <laughs> Look how quick your steak cooks. I know, right? Wow. This is great. Mm -mm. What a treat. Mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna put in a box away too. <laughs> this was amazing. Mm, totally amazing. Yeah. We've been well fed. Well, you guys, the hot pot was definitely not broken. Okay guys, so today we are going to be trying two of the returned appliances. We're gonna be doing a very simple green tea with the kettle, which I'm pretty sure the kettle's gonna work, but I will say I had a few surprises in the last video testing the kettle, so I'm not like gonna bet my life on it, okay? And then the second thing we're gonna try is the air fryer. We're gonna make some deep fried pickles. Let's get into it. Also, my nose is dripping because they're painting. Ignore it. On French fry. Oh, oh my gosh, was that an egg? No! The egg just rolled away onto the ground. Too much is happening right now. There's yolk all over the floor. I'm gonna keep a close eye on this egg this time. Do not. Oh, you're trying it. Didn't you see what happened? Oh. What we're gonna need is we're gonna need a gluten-free flour. I'm using sour gum. We're gonna need an egg, crumbs of some sort, and pickles. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on this one, some crumbs on here, and then we will put the egg in here. Now deep fried pickles is like one of my favorite savory foods, but I rarely have them. So I'm thinking with this air fryer, if this works, I will be unstoppable on my pickle journey. I guess it's like really important for the pickles to be like super dry. So we gotta make sure to dry these after. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm not showing my face, because my nose is running. Mmm, those pickles are ridiculous. Sphere time for the pickle. Okay, pickles, dry off. Dry your pickle self off. I don't know why this lighting looks so much like a crime scene right now. I don't know why, I could not tell you. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of flour on our pickle, and then we're gonna do some egg. Okay, you keeping up? Then we're gonna do a little more flour. A double layer? Who am I? I think I did it wrong. I think you're only supposed to do one layer of egg. Oh my gosh, it's so squishy. Only do one layer of egg, you guys. It was a bad decision. 
Okay, I'm not 100% sure how this pickle will do. He was our test subject, but I oiled the air fryer and I'm just gonna set it in there. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, pickle smells good. I'm excited though, if this works out. Because one of the things about deep frying, like I know it's not super healthy, but one thing also is it's kind of a mess, I find. So if I can do this without making a mess, because <laughs> my fingers are like, full of egg. I'm like, this is so not messy. Here is what the pickles are looking like. I'm gonna put them into the air fryer. And while we're doing that, I'm going to start the kettle. All right, don't fail me now. Here is the tea I'm gonna be trying. It's a green tea kombucha. I've been having regular green tea, so this looked fun. Two seconds later. Let's see how they came. Oh my! Pickle alert! Bum, 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 bum. Wow, they're very crispy, oh my gosh. My very delectable and weird mix of snacks today. Let's try them. These pickles look so burnt. I definitely should take them. Oh my gosh, the pickle's flying apart. This is my pickle. This is probably the worst pickle but this is what we're dealing with. Here's my pickle haul. Here's a pickle. Here's another pickle. This is kind of a star pickle, but on this side it's not. It's interesting though, air fryers are so cool because like this looks like it was deep fried. Oh, that was gluten free. <laughs> if you eat gluten free, you know what that's like to bite into something and it just falls apart. Mmm. oh my gosh. Okay, well the air fryer definitely worked. And so did the kettle. The tea's looking great. Let me feel how hot it is. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. Ooh, that smells good. Mm. This means the air fryer and the kettle are good. Okay, so today is named our sweets day because we are going to be testing two of the returned appliances and we're gonna be making sweet things. I got a sweet tooth. I'm wearing my striped two-piece set. As Tate said, I'm cosplaying a candy cane today. The first piece today we're gonna to test out is this toaster oven. I have reason to believe that this worked because it toasted a piece of toast, but I have a pretty big feat for it today. I'm gonna to make a gluten-free brownie. Also, if you're noticing all the dishes over here, yeah, that's still from our hot pot night. I haven't had a second to clean it up, please don't judge me. This seems like a really useful product because it's got all of these different settings of heat and also it's got broil, warm, bake, which is what we'll be using, and also toast. So like if you don't want to heat up the oven, you could just use this. We'll see if the bake function works. I'm gonna grab this tray out of here and then I'm gonna try and preheat it so like let's say let's say we need this set to 350 I don't really know what to do if I'm being honest you guys we'll just preheat that sure okay I have all the ingredients out I'm gonna be using a mixture of sour gum and coconut flour coconut oil as a butter substitute sugar as sugar. Gluten-free cocoa powder. These are really good dairy-free chocolate chips. And also we will need eggs. Now I'm gonna have to adjust the recipe because I'm just gonna use a small single brownie because I want it to fit in the toaster. I just think that'll be cute. It'll like fit right in there. So I'm gonna try and like, let's just guesstimate. I love baking when guesstimating because that's what people always say you can't do, but I'm like, you know what? You do whatever you want. I'm just gonna divide everything by three, basically. Whoa! Mix it up, let's see. My random ad lib recipe. This is like a late night mug brownie. Oh, I'm sure any legit bakers are watching this and just cringing. I'm sorry, this is honestly how I bake. Brownie in the pan. This is an interesting day we're having. On the top, I'm just gonna drop a few. Gluten and dairy-free brownie is 
complete. Now, fingers are crossed for baking. This is like, maybe I don't need this one. I'll put this one a little lower. How about that? Oh yeah, that'll be better, okay. Throw this in here. Oh my gosh, I hope it doesn't blow up too much. It's so close to the ceiling. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I never really understood why people had toaster ovens, but I, in this moment, I get it. This is exciting. I just wanna sit here and watch, cause I'm also a little concerned it's gonna rise and touch the top thing, which would not be good. Like, look at the available space that this has before it touches the heat filament. Uh. One eternity later. Well, the brownie has been baking. I did clean up the dishes, so now it looks better. I feel better. It is done, and it smells very good. Let me try it. I'm actually... <laughs> Chip, can you wait one minute? I'm actually very... <laughs> I'm very impressed that the toaster oven was able to bake a brownie. I don't know why, when I hear toaster, I think bread. But this is so much better. So, let's see. Oh my gosh, it almost fell in my sleeve. Mmm! Mmm! Mmm-hmm! You know what it needs? It needs icing. A few pounds of icing, that would do. Okay, but the toaster oven was a success. It worked. And honestly, the glass isn't warped. That person, I think, was mistaken. Okay, so now we're gonna be testing the popcorn machine. Now, I tested this in the first video and it worked amazing, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I've used it like three times, and it definitely works. But I thought, we'll make something fun in it. I saw this recipe called chocolate popcorn, and I was like, oh my goodness, that sounds amazing. So we're gonna try to make it today. Plus, I just want everyone to re-remember how fantastic this is. This might be my favorite thing we got in the returns. And we just click it on. Like, are you kidding me? I probably never would have bought something like this, but I love it. So now I want to melt some chocolate. So I have this chocolate. I use this with the brownie too, but this is the chunk. It's dairy free. So I'm gonna boil some water and get that melting. There we go. You can hear the popcorn is popping. The chocolate is slowly melting. Like this popcorn popper is amazing. Like, are you kidding me? And you get perfect popcorn each time. Ignore these few burnt pieces. That was on me. That was my fault. This is one of those single use products that is actually very worth it if you're a popcorn lover. It just makes it so easy. We're gonna have a sweet and a savory today. And how is this gonna turn out? Have any of you guys ever done this? Just put chocolate on popcorn? Come get your man. <laughs> Come get your man. <laughs> Come on, little muscle man. Is this video even interesting? Is this just me making mediocre meals? and items that are working really well. I thought maybe something would like light on fire or something to make it more interesting, but everything's working really, really well. So I guess that's good too. The chocolate is just about melted. Chocolate into the popcorn. <laughs> this feels really weird. Ooh, fun. This reminds me of something I made back in the day. <laughs> I covered popcorn in Oreos. Like Oreos all crushed up. Now I know this looks disgusting, but just trust me, it's clean. It's a reusable parchment slip. And just as you cook on it, it just never will look clean ever again. But I swear it is freshly washed. Okay, just making a little ball. Oh my, oh no. Oh gosh, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, this feels so wrong. This feels so wrong, oh no. Okay, weird. Weird, mm-hmm. It was a weird moment. All right, I'm going to put this into the freezer for like 10 minutes, just for it to cool down and become something delectable. One eternity later. Okay, well, let's try it. We ate the other one. <laughs> we had to. 
You absolutely did. Oh, oh I, I'll have this piece. It tastes like puffweed. Mm. Oh my. I think it just tastes like straight chocolate. What's he barking at? Who knows? Chocolate bar and shit. Um, Chippy can't have any. How did you learn how to put chocolate on popcorn? I don't know. It was yummy. Oh my gosh, my mouth. Morning. I didn't really get too ready today. As you can tell, I'm having a little bit of breakouts, probably from all the delectable meals I was eating. But today we're trying the oven fryer, which is sort of like the air fryer, but oven style. Should be interesting. We're gonna try to make cactus cut chips. Now, if you guys, I don't know, is Boston pizza in America or is it just Canadian? Boston is a state. So I feel like, is it an American thing? I don't know, but either way, Boston Pizza has amazing cactus cuts, not sponsored, but I'm gonna try and make them at home, at least a little rendition of it. I can't make the sauce exactly, because as I've said a billion times in this video, I'm dairy free. So I just got some dairy free ranch, so we'll see how it is. I'm a little bit scared of it, but yeah, we're gonna cook it up. Introducing the oven fry. Chip is in a crazy mood right now, you guys. He's having zoomies. We have some potatoes. This is that ranch I was telling you guys about. I have tried this brand before and it's nice, you know, it's dairy free and everything, but I, I don't know, it doesn't really taste the same, but it'll do. We've got some jalapenos, which I am very scared. I don't handle spice very well. And then this, which is actually a return. Oh my goodness when worlds collide. This was a return and it works really well. So we're gonna have to be careful when using that. But this is all we need. There was actually more things in this recipe, but I could not find a habanero pepper. So these will have to do. I'm going to do maybe two potatoes. I'm sure everyone's gonna wanna try these. I'll start with two. I'm scared. I'm always scared of this tool. Oh gosh, I hate using this. Oh gosh. How thick are they? Oh, this is gonna be perfect. These look like cactus cuts. Look how perfect those look. Oh my goodness, it's really nice to have this tool. But if you're using this, you guys be very careful. Bad things can happen very quick. And then I think also once you get to the end, start to use a safety thing. Lots of potato chips. I'm just going to set them out like this. We've got our chips. Okay, I need to do this again. I need to stop talking in a British accent. You know, I used to be somebody who really wasn't good at cooking. And I know I'm not the best cook still, obviously, but I really, really enjoy cooking now, which has been really nice. Like it's actually something that, you know, is one of the few positives that have actually come out of COVID is I was at home and I sort of learned how to cook. And I found it really, really fun and really calming. So I know I don't have like the best cooking techniques and stuff, but I've definitely expanded my knowledge in cooking and I'm pretty happy about how far I've come. <laughs> Cause seriously, I'm a little bit embarrassed to even say how bad of a cook I was before. It just wasn't something that I did. My brothers were always really good cooks and I wasn't. And I remember we used to always make fun of me. And yeah, I cook every single night and I always cook something different. Like it's been really fun experimenting with recipes. So having these different little appliances to try has been super fun because it just makes me think of all the other stuff I can make. I like how I'm saying like all this serious stuff while having this little star on my face. This is kind of just for like infusing some heat into these potato chips because cactus cuts are kind of hot. So I'm just gonna put a few of these placed around, do some salt. A little bit of pepper, cause why not? This is our at-home cactus cuts. Okay, so I'm gonna throw these in and I'm gonna put it on french fry just cause I feel like this is a potato. This would pretty much french fry. Don't blow up, you got this. I'm interested to hear if you guys have air fryers or fryer ovens and like what's your favorite recipes? Cause I definitely think I'm gonna keep either this or the air fryer. So let me know if you have any like must-have recipes. So I'd like to try them. What's up with this? Oh gosh. Oh my. Definitely got some crisp to them. Some are not crispy. I think it's like it would be more even if there wasn't so many, but I wanted that many. By the way, I did flip them halfway through. So let me just set them up. Look at this Disney moment. 
Look at the even cooking. I'm loving that. Oops, that needs to be right front and center. I am not here nor there on this. So we're gonna try it. I'm gonna bring in a celebrity guest judge and we'll see. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, come on in. He's so great. These look like the real thing. Why is he so yippy today? Okay. Those are delicious. <laughs> seasonings on here? Salt and pepper. <laughs> he just sliced the potatoes up, put them in with a little bit of oil on them, or what? That was exactly what I did. <laughs> I'm gonna give the fryer oven a check. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good morning everyone. We are on the last day of testing these returned items. It has been a wild and kooky and crazy success. So I'm hopeful that the blender is good. The recipe I'm gonna be using, I was searching smoothie recipes. And this video of Reese Witherspoon's smoothie that she's been having every morning for the last seven years came up and I was like, seven years, same smoothie, Reese Witherspoon. Let me see what this is all about. It was your classic green and healthy smoothie. It was really interesting though because she was like, this is what I account my good skin to. She said since she started this smoothie, her skin has gotten like way better. And I was like, hook, line, sinker, I'm in. Let's try it. So let me grab the ingredients for this one. Okay, here is everything that was in Miss Reese Witherspoon's smoothie. She put a ton of romaine, which is interesting because when I make a green smoothie, I usually put spinach. So I'm interested to see about romaine because I think I probably won't even be able to taste it, hopefully. Then we got some fruits for sweetness. We got a banana, an apple, and a pear. Also, we're gonna put in a full lemon, seeds and all. And then the liquid that's gonna make it all blend together is coconut water. And I know coconut water has a lot of benefits to it, so I'm excited for this smoothie. I will say though, I'm really hungry right now. And looking at all this, I'm like, I think I need more. Like, Reese, I don't think this is gonna do it for me this morning. I'm gonna need more food. I'm gonna make two, one for my man and one for me. He's probably gonna not like it, but whatever. It doesn't matter, it's the thought that counts. She put two heads of romaine in her two smoothies, which is actually bonkers. Chop, messy chop. In it goes. Oh my gosh, how am I gonna fit this much romaine in here? There's not gonna be any room for anything else. Okay, I better stop. We'll just do that for now. We'll see if we can blend it up and add some more later. Pear. Pear is like one of my favorite fruits ever and I feel like it's slept on. Apple. Oh gosh, I'm cutting the sticker. Oh my gosh, there's no room for anything in these smoothies. Get in there. Okay, we just need the banana and the lemon. We can do this. This looks great. Okay, now we put the whole lemon in, but not the skin. This is fun. I'm having a really good time making this smoothie. Crack in the coconut water. This is full of electrolytes. I don't know how much we need, but I'm just gonna put a lot. Ooh, this looks so fun. It smells great in here, you guys. I am going to be peeing my pants from this. All right, let's hope this blender works because now I'm like very committed. Everybody cross your fingers. Cross them right now. Gotta lock it in. Now. I'm starting with a pulse. Oh my gosh. That blended that like nothing. Whoa, I'm actually very impressed by this smoothie maker. <laughs> Blender. Okay. Let's see. Oh my gosh. This smoothie is powerful. I mean, this blender. Why do I just assume blenders are only for smoothies? Okay, my reusable straws. All right, let's try it. Oh my gosh, please be good. 
First, the smell test. Oh gosh. Mm. Smells like romaine, babes. It smells like lettuce. Okay. actually not bad it tastes very fresh I think my issue is all these little lettuce chunks are just sliding down my throat whoo that would take some getting used to maybe if the blender was a little bit better it would get those lettuce chunks a little smaller the taste isn't bad I'm just like really bad with consistencies I don't know, you know if you're a consistency person. Certain ones just make your skin crawl, but I could totally get used to this, like I don't want to be dramatic. It actually tastes good, which was my biggest concern. I want to see what Stuart thinks of it. His looks like it might be a little better. Stuart's is better. All right, well that looks healthy. It smells good to be honest. It does smell good, it smells fresh. All right. It's a unique smoothie. It's a lump. It's got some chunks in there. That's the some problem, texture. right? The texture <laughs> is the problem. But it's good though. The, the lemon main. really keeps it fresh. The lo the lump, the lo main. The <laughs> lemon does a lot. You can feel my skin getting better. Anyways, okay. Well, I don't know what else to say. We tried the returned appliances. Let's go to the final thoughts. Okay, well, I would call that a pretty major success. All of the appliances we used did not randomly combust into flames. I saw no sparks. Everything functioned as it should. I mean, all around. This was successful. I think I'm definitely gonna keep one of the air fryers just because I'm really interested to try some more air fryer recipes. So if you have any air fryer recipes that you love, let me know down below, because I think I'm gonna keep that one. Lots of the other appliances we've already donated and lots that we use in this video, we're gonna clean up and donate as well. But I just thought it would be fun to test them out. I thought maybe something crazy would happen. It didn't. I just shared a bunch of recipes where I was basically carb loading all week. But yeah, I hope this video was fun. It was a fair bit of work, but I really don't know if it turned out well. I almost feel like it would have been more exciting if one of the air fryers would have like lit into flames. <laughs> because then we would have something to talk about now, but we don't because everything was a success, but I'm not complaining because I'm happy it was a success. Either way, I hope you guys had fun watching. I definitely had fun filming this video. I just think it's really cool that all these items were returned and then we used them and they were great. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!